Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to another micro tutorial. We'll be making a very simple 2D controller today just to get you up and running with any new project you might be working on. But first, before we get started, if you are interested in any of the assets that I'll be using today, you can find it for free on the Unity Asset Store. It's called Gothicvania Cemetery. It's free and it comes with a, quite a few things to play around with if you're interested. Let's get started. So I have set my scene up and the first thing I would like to do is set up a ground collider. So we'll go to the hierarchy, right click, and make a brand new empty game object. Next, we'll give it a name, and let's call it Ground Collider. Now, down in the inspector, go down to the Add Component selection, and let's go down to Physics 2D, and let's give it a Box Collider. All right, now let's move this down to position and scale it. Very good, yeah, something like that will work. All righty, now that we've got the ground all set up, let's start with our player. So let's jump right back up into the hierarchy, right click it again, and let's make another empty game object. Back in the inspector, we'll give it a name. Uh, I'll name it player. You can name it whatever you want. Now select and drag your character sprite into the player object, making it a child of the object. To help me keep track of the game object while I'm messing with my sprite, I went ahead and gave this little dot, which you can find here. Next, scale him up a bit, and I'll align his waist or center of gravity uh, with my little red dot. Yes, perfect. Now that that is done, let's put him back in our scene and position him on his x-axis so he's in front of all your other objects. Now that you have your character all set up and ready to go, we need to be able to interact with other game objects, or specifically, other game object colliders. To do that, we'll need to add a collider. So go back down to add component in the inspector, select and click the physics 2D option, go down to box collider 2D to add that to your player object. Adjust the x and y value as you see fit, and then we'll add the rigid body 2D to handle all the physics based movements. To add that, we will once again go to the add component, physics section, and add rigid body 2D. All right then, go ahead and hit play and we'll see that not only does he fall, but he collides with the floor and does not fall through to the void. Excellent. However, it's looking quite a bit dull, him just staying there. So let's spice things up a bit by adding an idle animation. Now note that we will not be doing a full in-depth animation system or anything like that, but I would like him to just move around so we're not just looking at a static image. So, on your screen you should see a tab called Animation. If you do, click on it, and it should look like this. However, if you don't see it, there is an option called Window that's up at the top of your screen. It'll be near File, Edit, Format, and all the rest of them. Click it, and you should be able to access it from there. To make an animation, we'll click the Create button, and we'll add a name, name it whatever you want, and then drag your sprites into there and move them however you see fit to create a little animation for yourself. Mm, yes, it's perfect. That's what I like to see. Now that we have our character animated, let's get him moving. Go to Add Component, scroll down to the bottom to New Script, where we will be creating a brand new script. I'm going to go ahead and call this Physics 2D Script myself. Wait a few moments for it to compile, double click it, and open it up in whatever program that you'll be using. And let's get coding. Now that we've opened up our script, let's go ahead and head up to the top and declare some variables. Let's start with our rigid body first. So type private rigid body 2D and let's name it RB and a semicolon at the end to declare it. Now we're going to declare and initialize our speed. So let's type public, type float and name it speed and let's set that to five. Now we need to define what RB is. So let's go down to our start function and there we will declare it. So we'll go RB equals get component and inside the little carrots, we're gonna put rigid body 2D and then end the line like so. That way, at the start of the game, it will be predetermined all the time and we don't have to manually set it ourselves. So whenever we're controlling any physics based objects, we need to put it in a different type of update. We call this a fixed update. Now, fixed update is different from the normal update because it keeps track of your frame rates in conjunction with your physics engine. This way, we don't run into any wonky physics. So in our fixed update functions, we will need our x input. So type input x. This will be our float value that we will use to keep track of our inputs. And now equals input dot get access raw. Inside the parentheses, put horizontal. But it currently will not work as typed. That is because we have yet to declare what exactly input x is. We are currently trying to pass in a value that doesn't exist. So let's fix that by going up top and writing private float input x. Now that we've actually defined this thing, we can go ahead and apply this to our rigid body 2D. Alrighty, type rb dot velocity equals a new vector 2 and inside we'll go ahead and do our calculations. 
we'll go ahead and plug in input x, which is either 1, negative 1, or 0, and we will multiply that by our speed. Type comma, and we will now be applying that to our rigidbody.velocity.y. What we are doing here is multiplying our direction, which is a negative or a positive, and we are multiplying that by our speed value and putting that into the y value of the rigid body's velocity. Hit play, and as you can see, it should be moving right and left. However, we seem to have run into a little bit of a problem. As you can see, he falls over. We do not want this, so here's how to fix that. To fix this, go under rigid body, and you will find an option called constraints. Click on that, and it'll bring down a few extra menus. We want to click the freeze rotation option. There's only one, Z, and that will fix it. There you go, he will no longer fall over. Okay, and now for jumping. To do this, we'll need a way to detect if we are hitting the ground or not. This can be done by detecting a tag, therefore limiting what you can and cannot jump off of. But in our case, I just prefer to jump off of anything that has a collider attached to it. Okay, so to make this guy jump, we're going to have to apply some force to this rigid body. To do that, let's go ahead and implement a float. We'll call it jump force. So go up to the top and make it a public float, and we'll call it jump force. And we'll go ahead and initialize it to give or take 5. And then we're going to have to determine whether we can jump or not. To accomplish this, we're going to set ourselves up a boolean. So up at the top, let's declare ourselves a serialized field. This way we can keep it private, but also view it at the same time. And let's go ahead and type bool is grounded. Now down below at the bottom, we will detect whether we are touching any collider in our scene. If you want to limit this, uh, you can do it just by using tags or something. For our uses, it will look like this. Private, private void, on collision, enter 2D, and then is grounded equals true. And then we'll go private void on collision exit 2D grounded equals false. I like doing it this way because it's quick, easy, and rather efficient. We can also check to see if it's working or not by printing out to the console like so. However, we could also just as well look at the boolean value in the inspector, seeing as how, even though it is private, we can view it in the inspector because it is now a serialized field. These are just more options for you. Alrighty, jump your way down to the update function. And it is here that we will be applying our jump force to our player object to make it jump in the air. And due to the logic that we have implemented down below, he will only jump once, and he will only jump if he is grounded. Well, once we apply the controls anyway. So, to do that, let's declare an if statement in the update function. And what we will be doing is, if our is grounded bool equal equals true, and we hit the right button, we will apply jump force. So, here we go. Let's go ahead and type if is grounded equal equals true, and input dot get key, key code dot space, then we'll go rb dot velocity equals vector to up, multiply by jump force. Perfect. And if you would hit play, he should be jumping. But there's just one teensy tiny thing I'd like to add. Currently, if you were to jump or move in any direction, he just doesn't ever face the direction that you want him to go. So to fix that, let's jump back down into our update function underneath our is grounded function and let's go if input x is less than zero then we're going to transform dot euler angle equals new vector three zero 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 and then we'll go if else input x is greater than zero transform dot euler angles once again i'm not sure exactly how that said equals new vector three zero comma 180 comma 0. So what this will do is determining on which direction we are facing based on our input x value We will then rotate our entire player object And there you go. It should be working. Look at that guy go But thank you guys so much for watching this today I hope you found it both entertaining and and informative and if you're feeling up to it Tell me what you're making down below I'm genuinely interested to hear uh, what you guys are making and I really hope this was useful to you But that should just about wrap it up. I hope you guys have a fantastic day and I'll see you all later.